Hello. Welcome to a demonstration of PitKit Plus. PitKit Plus is a replacement to the software for the microchip PitKit 2 and PitKit 3. This will extend the life of your PitKit devices to support the new 8-bit devices. The software for PitKit 2 and PitKit 3 went out of support in 2009 and 2012. Um, we brought that back into support. We've added in these new features to support the new parts. So there's a new, there are a new programming protocol, and that new prog programming protocol has been included. There is no change to your programmer. This is all just done in the software. What we're looking for is, we're, is we'll provide that to you, and we're looking for donations for the licensing maintenance. Let me show you what we can do. So I'm actually running it under. Um, Windows XP for this demonstration to prove to you that if it runs under XP, Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10. We'll just quickly install it under Windows XP. Under Windows XP, you get the license warning um, about an, an unknown publisher, and that will be slightly different on Windows 8 and 10, but we will uh, sign this um, application and packaging once we get sufficient funds. This is about a funding problem, okay? Well, I'm not a, not a charity. Um, except the licenses, we've given you some insights into um, the licensing and also some key information with respect to usage. There is a known issue and has been a known issue unfixed by microchip. We have fixed as many bugs as we can in the software, but there is, um, there's always been one bug and that bug is all around voltage control. Just read the uh, critical information. I'm just going to take the defaults and install the complete package. The complete packages, package uh, consists of PitKit 2 programmer, a PitKit 3 programmer, and a command line utility, utility that supports both. That's the installation completed. For Windows XP, you may need to install .NET. You will find that in the actual folder that's been installed. So inside of here, you will find the .NET fix for Windows. Unzip this, and you will find the necessary files to fix it. Let's just move on into the application. I've got a PitKit 2 attached. I've also got a PitKit 3 attached, which I'll plug in in a moment. But we'll just use the PitKit 2 to start with. PitKit 2, it looks pretty similar. Um, however, these are new parts. This is a new part with the new protocol support. So the new protocol support is embedded inside the software and embedded inside the database. The database uh, consists of um, new parts, and those new parts are listed here for you so you can see them. So these are the, this is the total number of parts that are actually in the um, database. So we're adding parts continually, and this has um, been updated. And you can see the version number here. It's in gray, very slightly, or you can see it in the new help, which is over here. So you've got a similar user interface, tweaks the interface I'm not going to go into. It's just not important. The key thing is I can read a brand new part. This part is, um, as I say, one of the newer parts, and I've programmed this previously. Okay, so I'm just reading it in. So um, just to prove um, it all works, that's the user interface. I can then verify that quite easily. And I can swap out my PitKit 3 with my PitKit 3 use, um, GUI. We've also got a command line utility. And that command line utility enables us to program it without the, user, uh, um, the GUI interface. Now, there is no relationship between this software and the development team that we're from. They're two independent developers, developments. So what I'm just going to use, I'm going to use Great Cow Basic just to show you the command line utility. Okay, the command line utility. We needed it in Great Cow Basic because it was quite useful. So I'm going to create a new program. I'm going to use a demo that's in here. Let me just grab a demo. It's very simple. And it's, this is our programming language. Let's not get too caught up on that. And I can just grab the current part by clicking a little icon there as I did. I can paste in the chip name and I can um, make my program, which is written in BASIC, into assembler, and then program it. And in the background, it's just program that part. So how do I know it's program that part? Hmm. Uh, well, I can see over here, 
if I erase it, I read it, I program it again. I'm recompiling the whole program. And what is this? This is doing. This is calling the underlying command line utility. The command line utility is documented. You've got all the same switches and commands that you had before. And I'll just show you how we edit it in Great Car Basic. This is the actual. It's got the same uh, type of um, command lines to the original microchip one, but this is a complete rewrite because I'm going to swap out my I'm going to swap out my pick kit 2. I'm unplugging it here. I'm plugging in a pick kit 3. And by the way, you can have both plugged in at the same time. I'm plugging in a pick kit 3. Just to prove it to you, I'm going to check communications. That's disappeared. Um, pick kit 3. So that's an error from XP. That's because I'm bouncing things up and down here. I've now found this part inside of um, a pick kit 3. Just to prove it to you, I can read that in. And there's my program coming in that I programmed with the pick kit 2. And with no changes inside of my, my Great Cal Basic IDE, I'm just going to program that. And I'm going to program it in a pick kit 3. So without changing the um, IDE or the commands, you can just program either pick kit two or with a pick kit three. It says it's done it like okay. It knows the part, it found the part, etc. So what we've got is um I'll just plug in my pick kit two. I've got lots of USB cables. Um and it won't find a part attached because I don't have a secondary part, but just to show it's there at the same time. And if you send on the command line utility, you just send an extra parameter and you can pick a pick kit three or pick kit two or a named part. A named uh, so you can actually name it the ID, you can use the ID to actually program. So that's a very quick uh, demonstration of pick kit two um pick kit plus and it supports in summary pick kit three and pick kit two programmers with no changes, no firmware changes down there. It's all software. OK, um, it's all about software. It's about the parts database and it's about raising the quality of the software itself. So I thought it'd be worthwhile sharing you PicKit Plus. Um, we're in just starting to release it formally. Um, we've got so busy, but you know, we're, we're getting a few out a day now, which is very few. OK, but this will explode because PicKit Plus extends the life of your PicKit 2 and pick kit three, and you don't need to use MPLAB IPE anymore for 8-bit computers.